this um, this uh, Bitcoin. All right, let me start recording. All right, good afternoon to all of you. Once again, this is Cal, and let us start our afternoon MEO right now. Okay, today is the 21st of May, 2021, Friday. Thank God it's Friday. Finally, I can take a little break. It's really not easy to have MAO in the morning and MAO in the afternoon. Now, for those who are not too sure why I got two MAO, morning MAO is where I cover global market news, global market like indices like Hang Seng, NASDAQ, Dow Jones and stuff like that, and gold, silver. So this one is only for my student. But of course, I do recording on this. I only released the recording about two days later. It's actually, uh, you can find it through Trade with the Boys YouTube channel. Go YouTube, key the word Trade with the Boys, and you see the authentic uh, logo that we have here. Okay, this is the logo that we have. And then you can look at all the past archives there. All right, more than 100 videos already. But as I said, usually it's like one or two days delayed because I have to give the benefit to my students, right? So if you want to hear me live, you, can, you must actually become my student then you can hear live. But of course, this morning MAO is going to cater for financial market. All right, crypto one is what we are seeing right now is live. It's always on the Trade with the Boys Facebook page. So you can see a difference there. Okay, so today, the main thing is this, today. All right, how about what we're seeing now? Is it a good time to buy into Bitcoin? What do you think, guys? Is it a good time to buy into Bitcoin right now, in your opinion? What do you think? Is it a good time to buy into Bitcoin right now? All right, let me hear you guys. Is it a good time to buy into Bitcoin right now? If yes, be key, uh, key the word yes. If you say no, then key the word no. Okay, Leon say no. Leon say no, sorry. Leon say no. Uh, Louis say not yet. Maurice say a bit. Jonathan say no. Esther say no. Peter say wait for, Jimmy not yet, Michael no, and anyone? Anthony KIV, <laughs> keep in view. All right, <clears throat> Fred say no, okay. All right, so I'm going to give you the word that I highlight and I, under, and I underline, the word is safe, right? Is Bitcoin safe to buy more now? Now, because what we did is that we bought some at 30,000 already. 30, 31,000, we bought some, all right? Actually, with 31,500, to be precise, okay? 30,000, we didn't get to buy. All right? We wanted to buy, but didn't get to hit. All right, so 31,500, 31, we bought some, all right? And yesterday, Bitcoin went up to as high as 42,000, right? In fact, 42,000. Tempted to take some profit, but uh, we will see how it goes this today. Now, the word they're using is safe. Now, let me explain to you why is it safe or not safe, okay? All right. Wow, Fico, you have uh, 19K then buy. Okay, fair enough. Now, let me explain this to you. But before we do this again, once again, please understand that whatever I share, that carry risk and do note, again, this is used for learning aid. Whatever you do in your own trading, please make sure that you do your financial, uh, you know, make sure you are finan your financial condition uh, permits that. So don't over trade and get yourself into trouble, Okay. So if you're okay with this, I'll, in the next five seconds, I'll count down. If you are staying on, that means that you accepted your birth and you have indemnified me, all right? So let's count. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, let's continue then. Okay, now remember this rainbow chart. Now, how many of you actually went and take a look on this rainbow chart after what I shared with you yesterday? How many of you done that? As in you go down and draw the lines. Have you done that yourself? Have you done it yourself? Have you drawn the lines for yourself regarding about this rainbow chart? Anyone done? Have anyone done it? No one? Okay. Now I guess as much, maybe not. Oh, Ziming, you done it. Oh, wow, very good. Okay. Anybody else? Only Ziming have done it. How about the rest? Okay, only to me. Okay, all right. Now I have done it for you. Yes, you see. I mean, this is how you know when you want to help someone, you help them all the way. Okay, really, you help them all the way. Don't just halfway there, and that's not what I like. So I did it for you. Okay, let's do it. First wave. Da -da -da -da. Okay, obviously it's not drawn to scale because I realized that the chart is not that accurate. Huh? 
but it's just around there, okay? It's just around there. So you can see that this is the first wave, second wave, third wave, all right? Then after that, if you look at it now, you wait one more wave, you can see a very interesting phenomenon already. Then you can see that the jackpot point. Now these levels are all, uh, it's exactly the same, all right? It means that I just copy and paste the lines over. So I think in terms of distance, I said the first one, all right, I think should be quite okay. All right, so this is how I look at it, all right? Because I use the middle first as a gauge because I realized that the distance here but not very correct at the front part. So actually I am a little bit of a, uh, what do you call, uh, curve fitting to make sure that we have it correctly. So this is the one in the middle should be most accurate in terms of distance, right? So I forward it and I saw the same phenomenon, right? Instead of this one, it came down first, but once it hit that turning point, it went up, right? It's a bit of our KFC, yeah? our technique. <laughs> okay, so you realize that the point where the red line hits usually will either show you a possible change of trend. Now, it depends on what was the current trend back then, but it does seem to be able to tell us something. So because of that itself, right, I did a forwardation on this and look at it. Oh my God. Da, 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 da. Can you see that? Wow. Now you understand why. You know, if we have done this, we have done this like what, five days ago, six days ago, I would have known that, right? The Bitcoin will come down. <laughs> All right. So think about this. Wow. Incredible. So, so we now know, right, when is the next big movement, okay? It's likely it'll be in March next year, right? <laughs> okay, anyway, my point I'm trying to share with you is there's nothing to, you know, it doesn't tell you that you, what will happen. But one thing that I can be very sure is that um, we are now having a bit of selling. That is for sure. We can all see that, okay? You don't need me to tell you. But um, if the market, <clears throat> based on what I'm seeing <coughs> right here, but it does seem to be going down to a certain level and then it may hit uh, one of the rainbow color before we actually see something. So which means from here is uh, right, we can actually deduce that we may be near the base level if let's say the market do come down. If not itself, right, after the base level is done, if the market cross back in terms of colors, that means if you cross back above the color, I mean, in this case it's yellow, then probably we can actually get further upside. So incidentally, if you realize this, the movement here itself is between these two color range. So the, this is the midpoint. So that is a 50% mark. So in short itself, right, we can roughly gauge where the, the different side of the color is. But what you can do is you can go down to blockchain center.net. You can actually use your mouse and you can actually get the accurate figure. So at least today I just show you this. Like Monday I'll show you more in details after I really draw the line perfectly. But you can actually draw this on your own and then maybe you can deduce something out of this. Okay. All right, so that's why, that's why we can see that maybe there was a foretelling sign that the market was about to come off because of that. So if that is the case itself, right, then the question will be um, this. Where are we right now, right? You know, yesterday we actually did a little sharing on this, right? Yesterday that we tried to use your calculator and then you do the, mouth, the, the stuff, right? So I did again also for you, right? I did again... I did something for you. So let's just assume that this 64,000 recently is a new paradigm example, okay, example. And then after that, now the recent sell down is a bull trap. So if the market is to recover to normality, all right, you'll come to a certain level, right? So we tried and did the numbers yesterday, but it was very brief. So it was not that good. So today I have done the extra step for you, all right? The extra step for you. Now, nah, this is the extra step. So what is happening right here itself, I take the historical high. Now, of course, different brokers have different levels. This is taken from AIMS. So my historical high is about 64,751. Then the recent sell down, you can see over here, went down to about a low of 29,763. So I do a simple mathematics. I say 64,751 plus 29,763 divided by two. I get this figure. Can you see that? Yes, I get to see this, right? So the 50% mark, which is a fair deal, is at 47,257. Okay, that is a fair deal, 50% mark. But of course, we yesterday talked about 40% mark, right? So which means that from where we are, all right, instead of going up by 40, by 50%, maybe by 40% first. So there is the level here we have calculated, right? The number is 43,758. So which means that, right, in my perspective right now, the, the 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 Bitcoin came down, yes, indeed. And then it staged a very strong recovery, which it happens. But the 40% mark is still here, which is the 43,000, 
758 level. So in short itself, right, if Bitcoin cannot stay above the 40% mark, right, it's kind of worrying. All right, it's kind of worrying. And the thing is this, if anyone asks me, then is there any key point to watch out for Bitcoin, right? The number will be, take, you take this number and this number, these two number, you take it and then you take them, add together, divide by two. What number do you get? You take 43,758 plus 29,763, you plus them together and then you divide it by two, you get a number. What number do you think you get? Let me know now. Okay, you may have got it already. <clears throat> 36,760 level, yeah, around there. Correct. So the number that we must watch very closely now, yes, in the Esther, Lynn, correct. 36,760, yeah. Here. Can you get it? 36,760. Okay. So what I'm trying to say is the BTC will likely pull back to around here for the first support. That means that now we have BTC at 39,000 to 40,000, right? The support will be at 39,760. 39,760. So that is a very critical support for the market somewhere around here which you can see incidentally, that's where the market forms a base. So if the BTC cannot stay above 36,760, there is a chance to see BTC going back down again. I repeat one more time. If the Bitcoin doesn't stay above 36,760, there is a possibility for Bitcoin to slam down again back to recent low. And that's 29,763. So for people who want to buy Bitcoin, can I suggest this to you? Right, at the moment now, don't chase first unless you want to buy to keep for a long, long time. Okay, I don't know how long would that be. If not, it's all right. You can consider to wait for it to cross 43,758. That is a 40% mark to be safe. Right, at least you know that there's a bit of buffer for you. For those who are going to speculate, can I suggest that don't do anything now? You wait for it to come down to 36,760 first, and you see whether the market will stay around there. If the market stays around there, then it's fine. If the market doesn't stay around there and goes down lower, right, then the next level could be back to the 30,000 mark. Are we clear with this? If everybody is clear with this, please key the word clear, C-L-E-A-R, right now into the group chat. Okay, Maurice is clear. Okay, Yuming is clear. Myself is clear. <laughs> Jonathan is clear. Sherwin clear. Esther, Lion, Fred, all clear. Okay, now let us let us ask this question. You may ask, Cal, why do you think that it's forty percent? Well, um, I always tell people this: is that you take yourself a visual. Huh? You stand on top of a mountain or a building, okay? And then you take a ball, a rubber ball, and you throw it down the floor. Now, this is the floor, this is the ball. Now, normally when a ball fly, hit the ground, what will happen? The ground will rebound. The ball will rebound, can you see that? The ball will rebound. And normally, let's say I'm on a 10th floor, and this is the ground floor, if, the mark, if I throw a ball down to the ground floor, how many floors do you think that the market, I mean, with the ball will rebound? Right, if I throw a rubber ball, a football example, I throw a football down, you throw it down. 
and from the 10th floor, I throw it to the ground floor, right? The first floor. Once it hit the ground floor, I'm quite sure the ball will bounce, right? But the question is how high it will bounce. So in your opinion, is that right? How high it will bounce? All right, if I say I throw a ball from 10th floor down to the ground floor, and it's a regular football, right? Have you done it before? Anyone can tell me? Uh, Lin, what I'm trying to say is that if let's say the Bitcoin can stay above 43,758, that's a 40% mark, right? And then it's safer. That means that then you want to buy and add more position. Now that is because you have already had position. If you don't have the position, right? Then I will say that it goes slow with current buy now because the market is still very choppy at the moment. Okay. So guys, have you seen before you throw a ball down from the 10th floor? Now I actually done it before when in young, young days. Now we throw it down on purpose, but we play football. And my friend was staying at 14th floor. 14th floor, right? Uh, where is it? Is at this uh, Juchek complex. <laughs> okay. Juchek complex. Right. So we will play football at 14th floor. And obviously, it's uh, as boys as boys, pum, the ball will fly out. Okay. I never done it before. Like, that's why I always hit grounder. But my friend loved to hit high ball. Bang, the ball will fly down. And every time you fly down, it will hit ground floor after a bang sound and the ball will just jump out. Right. Now, normally, we saw the ball will be up like about maybe four to five story la, around there, la, around there. All right, maybe wrong, maybe not so correct because we are so at a higher floor walking, watching it, right? Not very sure exactly, but definitely you'll bounce. So that is my point here. So based on what we are seeing in uh, where we see here itself, right? Okay, over here. All right, if this is going to be the same concept that this is the high, all right, and I throw a ball down, it will hit the ground floor first then it will stage a rebound. Now, if the rebound is going to be there, we call it as a dead cat rebound, which means that, right, normally it won't be more than 50%. Normally 50% is here. This one, this bounce between 40% and 30% around there. Lah. Okay, so the thing is this, you got an idea now. So if you got an idea now, right, that's where the mess comes in. Huh? Everybody, let's try it out again, okay? If let's say, if let's say, Right, 50% is 47,257. 40% 40 is 43,758. Then can I ask you guys to do me a favor? Can you calculate the 30%? Can you calculate the 30% right now? <laughs> I think if you see whether how many of you are fast enough to calculate this, actually quite simple. Uh, <laughs> if you can get the trick of this. All right, what is the 30% mark? Can anyone tell me? I think probably I'm the only Singapore trainer that liked you to play with the numbers. <laughs> oh, we have two numbers now. 39, 382, 40, 259, 32, 818. Ah! <laughs> wow, so many number again. Oh <laughs> uh, gosh. How, who got the right number? Who can get the right number this time? All right, uh, three sets of number now, 39, 382, 40, 259, 32, 818. Oh gosh, so is the number. Anybody can be very certain on the number? All right, uh, three number. Who do you think is correct? Lin is correct, Yu Ming correct, or Fred is correct? What do you think? Anyone else doing the number or you guys are already uh, not using calculator? Eh? Huh? Ziming, 33,079. Whoa, number further away. <laughs> Loin is uh, 4259. Lean is uh, 4259. Same number. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. So let's just try. Uh, since there's so many. Wow, 28,000. Huh? How can that be? 30% of. No, no, no. You guys are watching the chart or not? <laughs> Oh, okay, okay. Let's just try this, okay? Very, very simple, okay? First of all, 64,751. All right. And uh, you take this number, right? And you take this number together, 29,763. You punch, punch together 64,751 plus 29,763. You get 94,514. You divide by two, you will get the number here, which is the 50% mark. 
Am I right to say that? That's 47,257. Okay, all right. So yes, indeed, the, the simple way is use a 10% rule. All right, so which means that 64,751 minus 29,763, you get 34,988. Okay, you get this figure. Oh, I cannot see, yeah. Uh. Okay, right. So that means that the whole range itself, all right, is is the range difference is three four nine eight eight. Okay, all right. Am I right to say that? Okay, then you divide it by hundred. Okay, you get three four nine. So you multiply by ten percent. Every ten percent is about three thousand four hundred ninety eight, which is exactly what Maurice has just written, three four ninety eight. Okay, or three four ninety nine. So obviously it's all right, 3499 times by three, you get 10497, plus back 29,763, you get a figure, and that figure itself is about 40,259 to 40,260. Ah, correct. <laughs> okay, so somewhere have gone wrong, is it? Never mind, 40,000, 260. Okay. All right. Can you get an idea now? Okay. So now one more fun to go. Just one more to go. Okay. What's the between of them? What's the between of them? Between the 40% mark and the 30% mark, what's the between of them? All right. What's the between of them? Anyone can figure it out? The between of them, that means the 35% mark. Lah. All right, I don't think you need to do the 35% by go and calculate, right? You just have to take the high 40% plus the, the 43758 plus 40260 divided by two, you get a number. Exactly, guys. The number is 40. The number is 42,009, okay? Exactly. All right. So you get all the numbers now. Okay. So you get all the numbers now. Okay. So we got all numbers. Huh? So you guys can, okay. You got, got the number ready. Okay. Now let's us put into perspective of the chart. Okay. So the numbers you pick down, huh? 42009 and 43758 and 40260. Okay. So these three numbers, can someone key for me into the group chat? 43758, 42009. 40260. Can you key in? Yeah, because I'm using another computer. This computer don't have don't have a don't have a keyboard. <laughs> okay, someone have someone key your numbers ready? Right, hey, still not coming in yet. Anyone key already? Or oh, no one key? <laughs> Is my screen updating? Ah, thank you, Yuming. Thank you. Okay, so now we put something much more interesting to the chart. Okay, we bring the chart in. All right, so here the chart is here. Now, these are the numbers that I actually screenshot for you earlier. So the number we have, as I was 43,758, right? So the next number we have will be 42,009. Voila. Wow, look at it. Look at the way the market stopped there. Look at it, crazy, right? Let me do one more number. The next number, what's the next number? The number will be 40, 260, okay, we key in right now. Ta da okay. So do you know that why last two nights itself, right? Yesterday and today, the market just cannot stay above this uh, 4260, all right? If you go right now into the 15 minute, uh, 15 minute chart, we can see a very interesting phenomenon there. Can you see that right now? Look at the five minute chart and 15 minute chart, you can see that the market basically has been coming down. Went down to the low recently, bounced up, 
Look at it. Once it bounces here, it rejected as if that they know these numbers. Then after that, it goes up again, try, come back down. But when it tried and went through it, it went to the next level. But after that, it failed to stay up and then it come back down again. And again, it tries again. It hit that point perfectly and then come back down again. Cool, right? These are all numbers. And the numbers is what you have just calculated on your own. And it seems to be able to tell you the market. So I will now know that Bitcoin itself, right, has to cross 4260 for it to go to 42,000. So I will know that this is going to be the first another round. So the market has to stay above 42,009, the 35% mark first. So we are having a problem at the 35% mark. That is the problem here, right? The 30% mark is here, exactly, right? So my point is this, if the market is having problem to cross even the 35% mark, that means it's kind of weak at the moment. So only when this happened, okay, let's just do some forward expectation. So only when this actually happened, maybe when the market recovers, stay, and then stay around here and have to stabilize. Ah, then this is getting, this will get better and better, right? When you only get better, then we know that we can, it's safe to buy. But for now, it's all right. The trading range is around here already. Okay, so that is the first point that we need to be very careful of, okay? Because if the market just cannot stay above this point, which is a 30% mark, right? It's kind of dangerous, isn't that true? Right, isn't that dangerous? Yeah, indeed, that is my point here. Okay, so again, where is the danger point earlier itself? All right, it was between the two of them, right? Between two of them. Remember the number? Anyone remember the number? That's not all right, between the two of them? 43,758 to 49,763, the midpoint of the number. The earlier number, anyone can remember this number? All right, 36,760, the earlier number I mentioned, 36,760. So one more number, and that was the most critical number. 36,000. 760. All right. See, that is the reason why now the market is going to take this very closely and very seriously. So, which means that, right, this market really for Bitcoin must stay up to this point. This is the real diamond zone, okay? The real diamond zone for the crypto Bitcoin. So, I'm going to just say it's just upfront, as how I usually do. If the market is to um, come down, it has to stay above this point, 36,760 mark. It has to stay. As long as it stay safe, then you can look to accumulate over here. But if the market fail and go down, then that means uh, there'll be a free fall again back to the lower level, and that's for 29,763. All right, guys, this is a great sharing. If you like this, please key the word like, L-I-K-E. Right, if you don't like it, just key the word dislike. All right, I'm fine with that. All right, so let me see whether how many of you like this sharing. Now, these are the numbers to watch, and apparently the market seems to be following exactly as what we are saying right now. Okay. Okay, so you know exactly what to look out for. Lah. So at the moment now, Bitcoin is trading below the 4260 mark, right? Very strong resistance at the moment. You can see that it just couldn't go past it. All right, let me get bigger. This is the form of resistance. And look at it, how incredible is this? A number that you calculate through computer, <laughs> calculator, and the market know exactly where to stop and then pull back. Oh my God, a lot of money to make now. Actually, this is like $1,800, wow. If you can do it properly, right? You can make a living out of this. <laughs> okay, cool. That is what we share over here itself. Okay, so that is the Bitcoin on mathematics. All right, so the question is <clears throat> this Elon Musk. Okay, Elon Musk again 
has began to type. And recently he typed this thing, this sent out this post, this picture to Twitter. Then it's the word cybering, right? Am I not wrong? Am I getting it correctly? Doesn't I can't cyber king, eh? Or what? <laughs> kind of lost with the words. All right. So anyone can tell me what's this word all about? Okay, and then what happened? All right, after he has posted this and asked, how much is that doge in the window? All right, this one here, right? The he actually saying that in a bit of like dough, you know, this dough, the dough, the money dough. All right, so apparently after he posted this, what happened? Bang, this is where he happened. After the moment he posted it, the dogecoin went all the way up to 54 cents. Cyber Viking, oh, okay, all right, all right. Cyber Viking, oh, I see. <laughs> it's kind of lost. Okay, so you see that instantly, wow, it went all the way up again. And then after that, it came back down again. Cyber ruling, I think Viking bar. All right, so now you can see it's going back up again. So you can see that this is Elon Musk. Uh, I think he's a new new crypto king, right? Whatever he do, it seems to work. And I love to tweet, all right? So before we go into the technical part for today, this is something I just spotted just some moment ago. I know that we all know about this particular article, right, from writers, and already there's some clarification on this, but I'm so quite surprised our local media also utilize it, all right? They don't change it. So that's why when you look, whatever you look in the media, right, please make sure you check the source properly, lah. all right? It's not enough there. All right, so now we have this thing here. Yesterday, we had the White House out of nowhere. They say they're going to make people pay um, inform them when there's 10K, you know, uh, being used or transfer. So immediately the Bitcoin came off a little bit. But I want to ask a very stupid question. Isn't that the whole idea of using a cryptocurrency is to mask over, to tell people not, the, the, basically to disguise any form of money transfer? So if I were to actually, you know, have 10,000 or more and I had to report to the Inland Revenue, right? Then what's the point? I cannot understand this. I think after a while later, the market just laugh over it. And then after that, Bitcoin recovers. So I, sometimes I, I really don't know what are they thinking of just for the sake of just making sure they can make some money out of this. So I will just leave it there, but this is so funny and so comical. All right, now yesterday the market was okay, but our trading also reasonable. We had four trades yesterday, two wins. Two wins, the one in the middle was a big one. The smaller one is stop loss based on our rule. And then one more at the back. So overall itself yesterday, despite the market was a bit choppy, but still we have about 78% and it's two wins of four trades. Now you can see we are very open with our sharing. We don't mince our words. Whatever we don't tell you, we will tell you exactly what, how is this, okay? All right, so for today's Bitcoin, let's take a look now for today's Bitcoin, shall we? Now for today's Bitcoin, um, it is very clear that the market today is trading above the pivot one. And usually this is a good upside for buying. But the problem is the KSI is red and the blue bars are already there. So I kind of expect that some downside in the market today, like, as long unless it stays above opening price. So this is what I'm seeing right now. For today's intraday trading, how is it going? Well, initially we make money. That's a good one. Take a look, everybody. So the KCX bling blue to green. You wait for it to turn. And once it turned yellow, you look for buy. Of course, after you bought it, right, the market came down quite a bit, but because our stop loss is here, so we don't affect it. And after that, when the price go higher, there'll be some profit. Then after that, the blue, the green KCX blink once again, but there was no red to yellow, you wait for a while. And the other one coming again, no red to yellow, you wait for a while. Until here, well, logically, it should be a buy, but the red bar, the high, the opening price and the high is the same. So you wouldn't have entered based on our rule. Then after that, the next wave come in and this is where we buy. But unfortunately, we already stop out. Already stop out. Now we are entering our second buy, which is here. Color have just changed red to, I mean, blue to green. And now color changed from red to yellow. We can buy. So now at the moment for today, we are down by one. And we now still having one position. And uh, it seems to be moving up. So it should be fine. Okay, so got the idea. All right, so let's look at the Ethereum. Now Ethereum also by chart definition looks okay. That uh, it's above OP, above pivot one, so it's a buy, looks good. But the KSI is also red in color. So that's why you need to go slow because the selling pressure is still there. Okay, 
So we look at the intraday five minute movement. How can we benefit? Well, we can see over here. The market change, the market change direction. See a uh, color change from blue to green. Look out for it to buy. This is where you buy. And the stop loss is placed here. So the price went higher. So profit was given. All right. And after that, subsequently, the thing bling again. No entry. Bling again. This is where the market did not go above the entry bar. So no entry. And this is the third one, which is very clear. It's the CCRY. It's a pivot one. It's a pivot trade. It's an opening trade. And also that uh, everything looks good. But unfortunately, when everything looks good, the market know how to sabotage you and it was it was dropped out. Only now we are seeing another trade that's available. Color change from blue to green. And then after that, color change here is uh, red to yellow. So now for those traders who are long, we are already long here itself. Okay. All right. So that is the, uh, the, the TWB chart. So let's just look at the conventional chart, which I missed out yesterday. I apologize. Yesterday was rushing a little bit. Okay, this is Bitcoin. You can see that, as I said earlier, so there are a few numbers to watch out for. The only thing that's expressed concern on the long side, short side, is that the KS, the RSI is a very low level. So usually when RSI is very low, right, something may actually happen, okay? All right, so watch out for Bitcoin. Then for Ethereum, it's almost there. Well, the last time when Ethereum hit near this point was back in um, February 26. All right, so today we have another uh, movement here now with the market come down all the way. Now it is possible for the Ethereum to drop down all the way to MA200 to collect it at about 2,000, all right? But of course, if you ask me in the technical ground, I would say that, right, I believe that the market should see some support around this point here. Okay, this point is about 22,018, 2,200, sorry, 2,218, okay, 22, okay, sorry. 2218. This will be the level to watch out for. Hey, familiar number. <laughs> I will go target. 2218. All right, around there. Okay. So if the Ethereum is come down, we should see some support around here. All right. This is the moving average, which is quite high at 3345. Okay. So that is uh, Ethereum. All right, Bitcoin is still very, very far away. You can see that in the moving averages. So it's kind of weak at the moment right now. Okay, guys, so you got an idea now for cryptocurrency. I hope that I explained to you well on this. All right, let's look at the um, today's market, all right, for the financial market right now. Now the US Dow Jones, let's take a look, quick one. Okay, the Dow Jones today is still up by up, and uh, it's trying to stay above the MA30, right? That is at for the 4,130, so it's trying to stay above. The Nasdaq itself is restrict, uh, is <clears throat> restricted at this uh, MA30 right now, so 13,522 is a very strong resistance, and it's actually showing it right now. The S&P 500 is trying to stay above the 4,160, which is still still doing a good job by doing that. Hang Seng this month, this morning pulled down all the way, but didn't create the it did not create the BNB. So it's now trying to hover above the MLP of the previous bar. China A50 is is a is a BNB. I repeat, China A50 is a BNB, and this is not a good sign, not a very good sign for traders. So you need to be very careful on this, right? Not too sure what's happening in China, but there is online rumors about their. Yeah, problem with the COVID, apparently. Seemingly, there are some of the CDs are also getting hit again. All right, last but not least will be gold. Gold is now slightly lower, below OP mark. DEX at the moment now is trading a bit higher. Uncle Arun, I hope you are hearing this. I told you you'll go up a bit, right? It's happening right now. Silver. Silver is also pulling back a little bit below the 50. Eh, sorry, this is not silver, it's gold. 
Okay, silver, the weak chart, let me do a daily chart. All right, the daily chart is still trying to find some base at the MA30. So maybe a base, when you find a base, the upside will be easier. Okay. All right, last one will be gold. Go at the moment now is staying there. All right, staying above the, still uh, toying around the MLP level, nothing much here. All right, next, done. Next, still the same, nothing much. CCRY is a buy. All right, did I miss anything? Crude oil, last one, crude oil. Crude oil is still also hovering at the opening right now. So everybody is just, I see you, I see, you see me. No one is really, really moving at the moment right now. All right, so I will see more movement in the afternoon, in the evening. Like usually by by none this time, if there's no movement, then we should see bigger movement by the after, by the later evening part. All right, guys. So I have clear with you, so you know exactly what to do for Bitcoin. Remember those numbers, trade with those numbers, you should be doing fine. All right, guys. Thank you once again for this afternoon MAO. This is Cal signing off. Good to see you guys. Bye bye.